students welcome to the 42nd lecture in linear algebra in this video lecture i will take some important questions which are based on vector space so the first question is state true or false and the question is in any vector space if ax equals to bx so does this imply a equals to b so let's see whether it is true or false so if my ax equals to bx so can i say this implies ax minus bx is a zero this implies if I take x to be common, a minus b with x is equals to 0. And product of two things is 0. It means either the first term is 0 or the second term is 0. Right? So this implies a is equal to b. So this condition is only true, only true if x is non-zero. But is this thing mentioned in the question that x is non-zero? No, it is not mentioned. So overall, what will be the answer? Answer will be false so the next part is if f and g are polynomials of degree n then f plus g is also an polynomial of degree n so is this statement true or false so let me to take f to be any two degree polynomial right let me to take n equals to two so let it to be x square plus x plus one and let me to take g again with the two degree polynomial now clearly if i add these two so the x square and minus x square will get cancelled out so this will be two x plus two so this is a one degree polynomial so f plus g is not a polynomial of degree 2 and hence i will say that this statement is also false so the second question is if s is equals to the set is defined as containing 0 and 1 and if field is defined to be real and in the vector space that is a f from s to r show that the function so this is a vector space of the collection of all the functions right so we have to show that f is equals to g and the second part that is f plus g is equals to h where f g and h they are defined as follows so in order to understand this question we should know a fact that when can i say the two functions are equal so if i say i have two functions that is a function so function f and g are same right are same if and only if so the three conditions must be satisfied here so the first condition is domain of f and domain of g must be equal the second one the co-domain of f and co-domain of g must be equal and the third one that is f and g have the same value at each element of domain at each element of domain so if these three conditions get satisfied then only i can say that the two functions are same or the two functions are equal so see the domain in this case is s right and when that is containing 0 and 1 only so the domain is same and what is the output that is in a reals right so the field is reals so the code domain is also the same so the first and the second step they are already satisfied the third step is the main one which i have to check in this question that is f and g have the same value at each element of the domain so what are the elements of domain the elements of the domain are 0 and 1 so if i want to say that f and g are equal so what is my f so let me to write that is my f of t is nothing but 2t plus 1 right and g of t is nothing but 1 plus 4t minus 2t square and if i am saying if i am claiming that f is equals to g it means it has to be equal at every point of the domain right and what are the elements of domain that is 0 and 1 so it implies that if my f of 0 is equal to g of 0 and if f of 1 is equal to g of 1 in that scenario i will say that f and g are equal because already the first two conditions are satisfied so let me to check what is f of 0 so f of 0 is 2 into 0 plus 1 that is only 1 right and again what is g of 0 so that is 1 plus 4 into 0 minus 2 into 0 square so overall this is also 1 so f of 0 comes out to be equal to g of 0 very nice now let's check for f of 1 and g of 1 so what is f of 1 so this will be 2 into 1 plus 1 so this is 3 and what is g of 1 so that is 1 plus 4 into 1 minus 2 into 1 so this is also 3 so again this condition is also getting satisfied 
So can I say all the three conditions have got satisfied? So this implies that f is equal to g. Now let's check for the another part that is f plus g is equal to h. Now if I say f plus g is equal to h, so the first two conditions are already satisfied, right? Because if I take f, g and h, they are coming from this vector space, right? So this implies f plus g also belongs to this vector space, right? And they have the same domain and codomain. So the first two properties are satisfied. Now what I need to check, I just need to check the last property. That is what I need to check is f plus g at 0 must be equal to h at 0 and f plus g at 1 must be equal to h at 1. So that is the only thing which I have to check. Now since what is this f plus g at 0 this is nothing but f of 0 plus g of 0 right and what is the value of f of 0 we have already calculated 1 what is g of 0 that is also 1 so this is 2 and now let me check what is h of 0 so what is my h so h was just go back and see so my h of t is 5 raised to power t plus 1 so if h was 5 raised to power t plus 1 so what is my h of 0 so that is 5 raised to power 0 plus 1 anything raised to power 0 is 1 so 1 plus 1 2 so they both are equal to each other now let's check in the other case so that is f of 1 plus g of 1 that is my left hand side so what is f of 1 so we have calculated it's 3 3 plus 3 which is 6 and what about the right hand side that is h of 1 5 raised to power 1 plus 1 which is 6 right so they are also equal so all the three conditions have got satisfied therefore i will say that f plus g is exactly equal to h before concluding this lecture i will leave an example for you guys to solve it you can mention your answer in the chat box so the question is let v be defined as the collection of tuples that is a1 a2 where a1 and a2 both are coming from r and we define the addition of elements of v coordinate wise and for the tuple a1 a2 belonging to b and c is coming from any r and how i have defined the other operation so that is c times a1 a2 is defined as if my c is 0 so the output is 0 0 0 and if it is non zero so it is defined in this way so you have to check that is the above v a vector space over the reals so you can mention your answer in the chat box and in case if you face any difficulty in understanding this video lecture, you can ask me your doubts in the chat box or you can email to me. For more such videos, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much students. Thank you.